There he is. There he is. Woo! <laughs> He's getting Mickey on him. He's getting Mickey on him. What is he doing out there? They, I mean, those wall dashes look like they had arthritis in them. I'm not going to lie, but. And we fucking lost. Okay. What time did I go to sleep last night? Mm, I think about three. You go to sleep so late because you're watching Super SF6 Kami cosplay? Huh? No, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm just addicted to League of Legends. Also, let me see that cosplay. Where is that? Kami from SF6. Now, can I, I gotta ask a question here. <laughs> now, I gotta ask a question here. Does he, does he, does he do these as bets? Or does he do this like, uh, like sneaky? And sneaky just enjoys doing it. Why did I drop Poeb? Why did I drop Poeb? I didn't do anything, but if I were to guess, I would say it's probably because it's the off season and there's nothing going on in the off season. And RL Esports and Epic Games created an ecosystem where it's not worth it to own teams in the off season, which is why you've seen probably seven orgs at this point already leave. If I were to take a guess, quick gander at it, if you will. You know, the crazy part is I think Farah brought it up in Chalkcast the other day, but he was saying most players season was like three months long, or I guess it's four months, but it's like January and then by the time May hit, their season was over. How are you supposed to have any consistency as, any, as a, like a Rock League Esports pro if your, your season is four months? Give up, honestly, bro. Like you're saying that, but like that's the non-sarcastic answer as well. Giving up makes more sense because you can't make a career out of Rock League Esports. It's so fucking hard right now. And also, dude, people people have been talking a lot about like orgs making um, bad contract decisions, paying players too much, bro, but that's only a select few orgs. Like, it's not like all these players are just fucking loaded out the ass. You know, you'd assume like the top NA teams are pretty well off and then <coughs> top EU teams. But like, bro, out of that like top five of each region, it's probably looking pretty grim otherwise. Personally, I think Rock League is too old now for going pro and whatnot. Uh, I don't think that's the case. Like, I don't think it it has gone downhill just because it's a little bit older. It's just gone hill because of the decisions being made at the at the top. Like before, like if you were like decent and you were like a bubble player, like you could kind of get away with it because there's so much like prize money going around and also um, like contracts just being paid out. But it's just not the case anymore. So like you could kind of sacrifice some other things. Like you'd be like, oh, I could go to school, but now I'm not going to because. I can make 5k a month playing Rocket League or whatever. As a C tier pro. As an alpha cap tier pro. But now you just can't can't do that. It's like when the game finally peaked, they just gave up and with trying to grow it more. I mean The thing that sucks is like I look, I, I'm not gonna like rip on the new team that runs Rocket League Esports, but I just know the old team that was running it, there's like eight people. But like only one of them works there now. But they were so passionate about Rocket League Esports. And they legitimately, like, they fought so hard for a lot of the, like, a lot of the decisions you're seeing now, they fought so hard against those decisions. Eventually just, like, give in, because it's, you know, it's the big company making the decisions, not the people. So that's what sucks. That's why I always, like, I hate seeing um, those guys get any sort of flack. That's why everybody loves Murdy so much. Everybody loves Shice. Uh, he, was, he was more of, like, the public one. I mean, there was a lot of people running it and a lot of people doing this stuff, but he was more of the like the face of Rocket League Esports in a way of like that team. But those guys worked so hard to make Rocket League Esports what it was uh, last season. Last season was so good. Some of those guys still work at Epic Games uh, from the RL Esports team, but a lot of them got laid off. I think like half the team got laid off and then the others transferred to different roles, like not even in Esports anymore. Do you think anything will change with the next season format wise? They changed the format for Worlds to the AFL format. So I would actually have hope that they do. Like, cause it, you know, it seems like they're like actively listening and looking for feedback. It's just that what is the, what is the realistic change that they can make? And if they have the same budget, the season's gonna look exactly the same, I would guess, right? Cause the thing is like, if people want like regional land events for NA and EU or something, they're gonna need an influx of like a million dollars or some, you know what I mean? Some shit like that to be able to pay for all that. So like, where, like, are they getting extra budget? Are they getting another sponsor that can help? pay for that, subsidize that sort of thing. It's legitimately just all about money. 
so it's hard to tell. Like, they can change things, like, uh, like go to, like, a double limb format. Like, that's no problem. That's not going to cost any more money, right? But the things that people actually want, like a wild card or uh, five teams from NA and EU at the majors or... Oh, uh, I can't think of anything else right now, but anything like that, like that costs money. So like that, a lot of sponsors last season, right? They did Verizon, Ferrari events. Uh, they did, yeah. They've actually done a really good job and you could see it in game. Like Epic Games has the, has the clout. Like Epic Games has the pull to be able to get sponsors. And they've done a really good job. Maybe not this season with like their cars, like adding the cars in game and adding McLaren's in game and Nissan's and all that stuff like I mean they, they have it they can do it 2021 22 they have like every regional sponsor to feel like yeah I thought so too but I think that's just what happens I don't know if like Blast was in charge of that but Bla like Blast got handed over the keys to RLCS with like six weeks left and that's just not enough time to get all your events sponsored I would I would think because they have to make sure the event actually like looks right before they try to find sponsors yeah i don't know because i hadn't gone to the majors like i have i've heard good things from people working at the majors i think you know just a big part of things like which sucks is this seems to me like it was kind of like a feeler season kind of try to figure everything out because like i said bro blast essentially got like handed the keys to the rlcs with like six i don't know if it was six weeks or four weeks before the first show but that is a ridiculously short amount of time to prep like basically an entire season when you really think of like the scope of everything, it's not just like turning on, it's not just like hitting a start streaming button. <laughs> like they need all their asset packages and you know, all the graphics, the player pictures that you see on stream, like to get all that stuff prepped, get all the casters basically signed as talent, coordinate all the hospitality stuff for the lands are, are soon to be happening. There's so much to go on. And then like also people are like, why aren't the events sponsored and stuff? Well, if Blast is in charge of getting sponsors, like that would be a very valid reason. Didn't have enough time, really. Then their budget got cut, too, so they couldn't copy and paste even if they wanted to. Yeah. And when everybody was like, announce the new RLCS season, announce the RLCS season. And they announce it, and they're like, take this shit back. <laughs> we don't want it. I think they'll announce earlier this year. Uh, I would hope so, yeah. I mean, as long as there's not a, another production change, I think they'd be good. Yeah, China has their own client for what it's called. Have it on my old PC. I missed the Rizzo plays Chinese Rock League series. Bro, that was never a series. I did like one, maybe two videos on it. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they have like any players in China. Like, I wonder how that client's just doing. Like, do they even update it still? Did it completely fail? Did their client have a line showing the ball bounce or am I tripping? Uh, it did. It was an optional setting. Will I ever do a video with Joyo again? Bro knows ball. I think, um, like I could ask a lot of people to do videos and stuff, but I don't like... I don't know. I mean, it depends who it is, right? If it's like me and Kep playing ranked, that's like a whole different thing. But with like pros and stuff, sometimes you just start to feel bad you're tanking somebody, you know? <laughs> and I don't, I don't like that. I don't, I don't think it's like good for a video just because I'm like with them, you know? I mean, it makes for a better video for sure, but... Like if anything, I would rather play it like chain together with Joyo. You know what I mean? Not Rocket League. But you're used to tanking Kep, so it's fine. Exactly. It's no big deal then. Wait, question. How long did Ludwig take to hit a thousand three-pointers? Was it like six hours? Okay, so I thought it was seven. But in my head, it was either seven hours or four hours. But if you said six, it's probably closer to seven. You think you could beat him? I don't know. He had like two rebounders the whole time, right? That's got to be tough. A thousand threes. <laughs> hit the Luddy right now. <laughs> It just reminded me. <laughs> let me find this video. <laughs> yeah, okay, hold on. Let me just give context to this. Because this is kind of even funnier. I feel like when you have the context. You remember when we were talking about G1 and how they threw, uh, how they basically didn't pay their players and they owe like Jake, not not Jake, uh, Grenader Jake, like $100,000. And they didn't pay a bunch of people and they owe a bunch of people money and all that good stuff. But they also threw parties a bunch of parties in Austin and they also had a taco guy at the party and it was just free drinks everywhere and it was super chill and all that. <laughs> anyway, this was at the G1 party. <laughs> this ain't one, two, one. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, man. <laughs> I forgot that exists. I can't believe it. Bro, you just said that to me and it, it's like the last message Arshul sent me like two months ago. Out of nowhere, too, he just sent it. Like, holy shit. What the 
that shit away. <laughs> Don't hurt him now. Surprised he didn't break a hip. <laughs> <laughs> 